Hello and welcome. You're watching FII. I'm Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor. Now, the fallout of the pandemic and its impact on our health has been talked about quite at length. We on FII have covered various aspects. The impact it's had on our heart, the impact it's had on our overall health and specifically on our mental health and those of our kids as well. And in series of those conversations, today we bring to you an issue which is not much talked about but so pertinent. The rise of obesity amongst children as a fallout of the pandemic. So without any further ado, let's tell you what exactly is it that we know about this so far. Now tackling childhood obesity is a problem that India and the world in fact has had for quite some time. The National Family Health Survey conducted in fact before the pandemic actually hit us showed an increase of obesity in children in 20 of the 22 surveyed states where it was actually done. Healthcare experts have warned of rise in obesity amongst children due to the pandemic as well. And Niti Aayog recently organized a national consultation on prevention of maternal, adolescent and children obesity just about last week, about 25th of June. Niti Aayog also then said in its recommendation that a need to whole of the government and society to approach this is very important, saying it is a twin challenge of at one hand tackling obesity, on the other under nutrition and malnutrition altogether. So on the program today, let's try and understand how widespread this problem really is. It is not bound by borders and it is not only in India. In India, there has not been any survey done on this so far, uh, not uh, apart from the one that we just talked about that was before the pandemic, but across the world, lots of studies being done about this. Let's tell you what's happening in United States. In Philadelphia, they did a survey where overall childhood obesity prevalence increased from 13.7% in 2019 to 154 post the pandemic. Increase was more pronounced in patients and in kids aged between 5 to 9. In Italy, a survey was done during those only three weeks of home confinement. And they, uh, in their conclusion, took out that intake of chips, sugary drinks, increased the time spent on sporting activities and decreased. And thus, the people were spending much more time on screen and that, that's not so much out on the field. Another one conducted in Lausanne. Uh, Switzerland said that 40% of children reported eating more snacks during confinement and that led to increase in screen time as well in 75% children. Increased screen time continued even three months after the lockdown in 37% of their respondents. In a survey in Virginia, Commonwealth University, it said that 30% parents reported that their children gained weight during the pandemic. All in all, it basically goes on to tell you how widespread the problem really is. And this time around, you can't just blame the child. It has to be the attitudinal changes around them as well. So let's try and understand what exactly is childhood obesity altogether. Well, how obesity is calculated is a formula that we'll discuss on the program. But primarily, it is dependent on three things. One is behavior, physical activity, sleep routine, screen time, medication. Then there is diet huge component what you're putting inside you the consumption of high calories low nutrient food beverages as well and then there are genetic factors but look at this statistic alone genetic factors alone account for less than five percent cases of childhood obesity what does that mean that means that 95 percent of the cases or in fact more than that kids are adopting or getting being pushed into obesity because of factors around them it's not always genetic it's how the child is being brought up mostly so why is this really happening and what are the experts saying about it well some factors as we already know like children being confined to their homes facing higher risk of obesity in the pandemic that's practically all of us remember all kids as well closure of school parks Disrupting children's routine as well, higher intake of junk food, reduced physical activities, indirect impacts like health, mental health impacts, social isolation, increased screen time, all of that contributing to children as young as two years old gaining more weight than they should be. And early childhood, remember, is said to be a key component on the attitude the child adopts when they're actually growing up. 
But why exactly is obesity such a big problem, especially in kids? Well, because the weight gain could contribute to COVID-19 complications in children. Obese children are prone to early onset of heart problems, diabetes, hypertension, nutrition, uh, also linked to immune system, disease susceptibility as well, an effect on the child's self-image, confidence, increased risk of depression and anxiety as well. Remember, in India, there is obviously a problem. Uh, we are used to having kids being slightly overweight than they should be, and that is considered to be cute, it's a, considered to be healthy, but all of that could go the wrong way as well. So what should you as a parent be doing about it? Well, some suggestions again that FII team has put up for you. Ensure that at least 30 minutes of physical activity, even at home, four to five times a week is maintained. And there are some simple steps really, skipping, dancing, using the stairs, is, can really go a long way. Increase children's fruit and vegetable intake, regulate junk food, help children maintain a proper sleep schedule as well, eight hours a day and regular, and regulate screen time as much as possible really on that front. And while you might think that these are, well, things we all know, things we all should be easily doing, but it gets so much harder to implement. So are there some quick tips and tricks that you can adopt as a parent, that you can adopt as a family to ensure the well-being of people close to you. Well, that is what we'll be taking up with our panel today. With us on the program, we've got uh, Dr. Neetu Talwar. She's a senior consultant, a pediatric pathologist at uh, Fortis uh, Memorial Research Institute in Gurugram. We've got Dr. Shweta Khandilwal with us. Uh, she is going to give us a whole perspective on uh, the public. She comes to us from the Public Health Foundation of India and she'll give us a whole nutrition aspect of it, food being such a major contributor to why this problem is actually uh, being seen increasing year by year. We've got with us Dr. Anupam Sibbal from, uh, he's a senior pediatrician at the Apollo Hospital Group and we've got Dr. P.S. Narang back with us on the program. He's an associate director, pediatric at Max Healthcare. Uh, if I can go to uh, Dr. Shweta Khandelwal first and foremost on this. Uh, Dr. Shweta, I just want to start by basically wishing all of you a very happy Doctor's Day as well. Never a bad yes, idea to you. start your day like that and uh, also to try and hold this conversation because this one actually is an issue that goes beyond the doctors. Obesity is an issue that doctors cannot help maintain but can they only step in much later. So what is it? that parents, we as a society, as a mindset change, is it that we need to adopt to ensure that this is nipped in the bud, as they say, nipped before the child actually grows into an adult and forms permanent habits? So rather than giving you long lectures about what can be done, I think I have a simple formula which people can benefit from. It's obesity go. And when I say obesity go, it's an acronym for me where there are several aspects we need to as parents, as societies, as stakeholders need to focus on. Hmm. O for me is optimal nutrition, where we are talking about whole grains, about fruits and vegetables, about hydration instead of giving juices and, and other things like those. So that's my optimal nutrition, not under, not over, but optimal nutrition is my O. B is for behavior change. As you rightly pointed out, mental health is an important component. Behavior change in terms of parents as models, they are also under a lot of pressure, school authorities. There's so much we need to instill, not only in our children, but in ourselves to be able to get that adopted. So that's behavior change for me for better lifestyle. Don't think this is a break time. Let them see the kids at any time. Any time is okay for TV. Please follow a routine is what I'm trying to say by this B. E for me is environment. Very few people know that actually poor environments around you cause obesity also. So try and contribute as young children, as parents or as stakeholders again, try to keep your environment clean and pollution free. S for me stands for science, the need for good quality research and good quality data for offering local solutions. Do not copy paste what is okay in US to be here. We have a completely different diet patterns, mm. completely different culture. We need to adapt science in a contextually relevant mm. manner. That's my S. 
I for me stands for uh, industry to be an important partner, but needs curtailing of these unhealthy, uh, promotion of these unhealthy foods to be curtailed by the industry. So some amount of voluntary is okay, but I think more from policy perspective, there, there needs to be a rein in in terms of the HFSS foods, the high fat, sugar and salty foods. FSSI is doing a great job, but we need more support there. That's my I. T for me stands for use of technology, technology for surveillance, technology for not for giving screen time to kids, but using that in an optimal fashion to improve their understanding about key issues around this important topic. Hmm. Why for me stands for youth ambassadors. We cannot do anything, you know, don't think that we are oldies or whatever. Youth by mean, by, by spirit, by age, by every other factor, you need to have that, that spirit to be ambassadors of this change. That's my obesity and GO stands for G is a very important component, which is government policy. Like you rightly pointed yeah. out, it's not the kids' fault. It's not the parents' fault. We need policy support, whether it's advertising, taxation, schools, meals, fortification, so many things, convergence. And last O, I want to end on a positive note. So O for optimism. The parents should not take this as their problem, their kids. It's a modifiable risk factor. 95% of it is modifiable, guys. So don't take stress. We can start today with simple steps. I'll stop All right. there, Sona. That's I'll a great mantra, you. actually, to get started. And so many things, really, that need to be streamlined on this one. Thanks for sharing uh, that with us. Let me go to Dr. Narang next. Uh, Dr. Narang, when, it, when you talk about obesity, it is the world is now getting obese, right? There's almost a term called globesity which is now recognized and said to be one of the biggest killers. Some studies have also said it's bigger than maybe cancer as well. The onset, the early onset of diseases that it actually leads to. So this is a serious problem that we're looking at. But why does it become even more amplified when seen in kids? To all those parents who are watching and they say, oh, a little weight up and down doesn't really matter with kids. What is your message to them? What is the best way to even tabulate that, for example? First of all, Sonal, thank you uh, for your summarizing. And uh, we have gone into the biggest thing is that how we can prevent it. A lot of parents come to me and say, obesity runs in our family. And kids are obese, doesn't matter. Hmm. When they say obesity runs in our family, I say, nobody run in your family. That is why your children are obese. So when you start running, you will consume. And I mm. always give an example. Your servants probably eat more than your child eats, but every work of the house is done by the servant. Bring this, bring this. So he is doing a physical activity. A mantra given by Shweta saying that we should be giving 30 minutes of exercise per day hmm. and i will say not even sunday is a off it should be regularly especially in the pandemic and hmm. especially in the pandemic hmm. and the exercise in the home we can do are as you mentioned skipping going up and down the stairs three to four steps and do it at least 20 minutes equivalent to your treadmill hmm. and then toe touching and everything so it is very important that once you increase the exercise and then re reducing the foods and only food which I say to reduce is a snacks. If you put the snacks down to zero and then everything rest becomes equal in a very proper hmm. way. Hmm. And a lot of time parents don't realize that what is obesity. If they buy the clothes for their child more than their age required, then the child has to be obese. And that is in for them uh, a very clue that if for a seven year old, they're buying a clothes of a 10 year old, mm. then there is something wrong. Mm. And they should understand by calling children healthy doesn't mean they should be obese. By calling children he healthy should be a very proper body mass index and for children, it should never go above 20. And the way to calculate is weight over height scale in meter. And it's available on charts. They can see available with their doctors. Hmm. So very important thing is... I'm very happy you to... brought out the BMI formula because it is something that can so easily be done. 
in every household for every member not just the kids in the family and that really should be the way ahead let me bring in dr anupam sibbal on that note as well uh, dr sibbal we talked about how to calculate whether or not your child is obese to address that problem but i think a take away from what dr narang said is also that it is it is a mindset problem and i think the family and even parents need to start playing role models here a healthy household is bound to have a healthy child right that's an attitudinal shift that we need to get into yeah hi uh, thank you very much sonal for having me on your show uh, i think you beautifully summarized all the data and i think uh, uh, for our viewers it's, it should be an eye opener uh, i think we have to address a few mindset uh, issues here the first one is of course i mean it's lovely to see those uh, you know those chubby faces and thighs when you have little ones at age 9 months and and 2 years and i always tell them you know you're going to love the photos just now but honestly 2 years down the road we're going to have a discussion on why did we let this happen mm. so the first thing is to to recognize what is healthy what is not healthy healthy is not used appropriately in in common language here uh, actually quite often healthy is overweight Mm. which is something we need to change mm. the second thing is that quite often when uh, when parents see a trend where a child's going on putting on weight uh, they tend to ignore it and and denial is is very common uh, sometimes they say oh, everybody is big in our family uh, sometimes no no it's okay you know the question here is it's not okay because it's okay for now but you don't know what what obesity is doing to the inside you know we did the study uh, a few years ago we looked at south delhi schools and we uh, looked at obesity and we found that the incidence of hypertension um, was was higher we looked at uh, their livers we did ultrasounds of their livers and found that uh, uh, there was fatty change in the liver we know that obesity uncontrolled over years will result in uh, issues with non communicable diseases such as increased incidence of diabetes hyperlipidemia mm. and we know that that can eventually predispose to uh, increased incidence of heart disease so these are consequences that parents don't realize i mean you know cute and healthy is one thing but if they were aware of what can possibly happen mm. uh, they would think differently the right. third uh, the third key point here is that <clears throat> when you actually do recognize mm. that there is a problem with obesity please seek help Uh, I mean, talk to a dietitian, talk to your pediatrician, uh, and uh, then have a plan. And the plan really has to have goals which are achievable. There is no point having ridiculously difficult goals that you know the child is not going to be interested in, and the child is not going to have support to achieve. And this really quite often has to be the whole family coming together. Now, you are eating really fatty stuff, and you expect the kid to have salads. Doesn't happen. but believe you me it happens in families we've had this discussion and the parents are eating whatever and the kid is asked ye nahi khana wo nahi khana don't do this don't do that and the child is going to rebel he's going to say i mean listen teach my example mm. and the last point about exercise uh, exercise is is great it's not complicated to do you know it should be a simple routine that the child is comfortable sure. with but i think the parents need to support the child mm. in that parents will not exercise they expect the child to do that then it you know that's where it blows up you have to lead by example like i said it, it has to be staying fit and healthy has to be a culture inside the house it can't be preached uh, to kids specifically but how big is food and diet in all of this let me uh, try and take that forward with dr talwar over here uh, dr talwar in a pandemic situation where your outside movement your sporting activities are anyways a little restricted so it all perhaps boils down to diet as well and in the house it gets difficult i understand even parents are having a hard time working from home schooling from home doing all those activities it's a tough time for all of us do you have some quick tips on what should be done if you're trying to deal with a kid who you see is going in the verge of obesity yeah thanks sonal and it's a very important question so i would like to start by saying that with all the pandemic come uh, with the pandemic situation which we are in the midst of right now and we can expect uh, you know more waves and you know uh, periods like this coming on and off so mentally we have to be prepared for having a plan which is going to work out for a 
a longer duration of time so it all starts with the first thing i would like to uh, say is the attitude you know all of us are under a lot of stress parents are working from home yes but they are under a lot of stress meeting targets the work hours have increased the children you know they have actually lost part of their childhood there is no school there is no there are no friends no teachers to pamper right, them with right is there a way in which you can encourage them to do so even in the constraints of the home yeah so at home you know uh, because of the pandemic everybody has started storing a lot of food stuff uh, uh, you know fearing that there would be a lockdown and we would not be able to go out so uh, you know storing all these chocolates and chips and high uh, calorie and uh, sugary foods and juices at home definitely should be discouraged hmm. the second thing is you know if uh, both the parents are at home they uh, could personally supervise what the child is eating and uh, definitely i would uh, agree with dr narang that you know servants should be given a break and i think parents should start cooking uh, and uh, involving the child in the cooking as well and telling them how to and teach them by practice what is healthy cooking hmm. you know making fruit salads having uh, more of vegetables uh, in your salad and you know involving them giving them responsibility whenever we have had uh, uh, you know projects in which we make the child in charge hmm. it really is always a hit and it's always a success so the responsibility of the whole uh, nutrition of the family should be given to the child and uh, you know they should be able to uh, chalk out a plan right. and all uh, interesting comments that i have a last few minutes on the program and i quickly want to go back to dr shweta on this one dr shweta uh, we as a society have had very little focus if i can say on uh health on mental health as well but on nutritional value of the food that is going in yes there are now lots of measures in place and you know at least in urban centers in younger parents we see them more proactive uh but the advertisements that's a huge controversy of uh, what kids are seeing what they're consuming i often see parents saying that anything that you eating out of a packet just try and stop that that's going to be the start of your journey towards a healthy eating environment but not always feasible right right absolutely i completely agree with you and that is why the policy angle which we spoke about earlier is very very critical so fssai actually puts out several ways and means there's uh, you know some videos and and material for lay public also to use so by your medium i'm telling them to access these uh, reputed this uh, legible websites and make use of them there's also unicef india which has put out very good resources for children activity wise age wise very clear cut instructions on what children should do with parents and with you know other things mm. so i think we should make use of these resources and for those who cannot understand or maybe access this simple thing please remember jitna chalenge jitna active rahenge utna acha hai but at the same time choice of food it going in your tummy hmm. is also very important be a little more pay a little more attention to what is going in your tummy hmm. just reading a little bit of labels i know these are things which you will say is a modern elite thing but times are such that we need to when we can so see our bands and our recipes on google we can also see labels on the on on the you know things and, and we I should try and focus on on, on the whole well. is missing we all are now exactly. talking about eating nutritional food but what actually constitutes to nutritional food i think that is also that sort of awareness is missing last word to dr narang please uh, before i wrap this up on what's the way ahead over here because here uh, if you look at the bigger picture because of the pandemic we have kids who have been pushed into malnutrition and then at the same si uh, same side we have kids who've been pushed into obesity as well somehow that balance totally off well sonal obesity and malnutrition obesity and underweight are both malnutrition okay so right nutrition is something It, as when shweta said about the snacks the easiest snacks is sprouted dal sprouted pulses don't give sugars don't give ready carbohydrates they push up your sugar very high and once it goes down you become more thirsty and you become more hungry so if you eat an apple you will remain uh, your appetite will be good for 4 hmm. hours hmm. but you eat equivalent amount of sugar your appetite will come back in 1 hour hmm. so ready sugar consume body faster hmm. bring sugar up down you bring you go back into hunger
So well, for I think reducing... uh, we've said this earlier also. I think just an entire episode based on nutrition and how food constitutes to it is something that we need to look at. But we leave it there for the moment. Thank you all for joining us uh, and giving us your inputs on this extremely important issue, something that we all need to be talking about much, much more. Thank you.